Welcome to General Synod 2021, online from the heart of the Orchard County, the Diocese of Armagh and the ecclesiastical capital of Ireland. It is said that St. Patrick came to Armagh in 445 AD and that the local chieftain gave him the hilltop of Ardmacha on which to build a church. This became known as the Great Stone Church and Patrick ordained that Armagh should have preeminence over all the churches of Ireland. The story during the ensuing centuries is one of recurring destruction and restoration. The Irish annals record constant plunderings and burnings. The Danish incursions of the 9th and 10th centuries brought repeated destruction and during the Anglo-Norman conquest in the 12th century, the church was twice burned by crown forces. In 1268, Archbishop O'Scannell built the cathedral in its present form. His ground plan remains unchanged, but little of his actual building survives. This is because in 1566 it was burned by Shane O'Neill in his rebellion against Queen Elizabeth, and it suffered the same fate in the rebellion of 1641 by Sir Philip O'Neill. In these burnings, all medieval archives, documents and plate perished, leaving the cathedral with little to show of anything earlier than 1661, the year of its restoration. A further restoration of the cathedral was carried out between 1834 and 1840, when Archbishop John George Beresford engaged the architect Lewis Knuckles Cottingham. More alterations were made in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, including the moving of the choir screen to the south transept, the raising of the tower arches between the nave and the choir, and the installation of the rear doss in 1913. The most recent renovation was completed in 2004. St Patrick's Cathedral is an ancient building with a long and distinguished history. If we leave the hill of Armagh for just a moment and look across to the opposite hill, you will see the Roman Catholic Cathedral, also named after St Patrick. It was built in various stages between 1840 and 1904, and today strong links exist between the two cathedrals through the Cathedral Partnership. Looking east from the hill of Armagh, you can see something of the layout of the city. The green area in the centre is the Mall a lovely place for a walk on a summer's day. It is surrounded by beautiful Georgian buildings. And what was once a horse racing and bull baiting venue was transformed by Archbishop Richard Robinson in the 18th century. He replaced and built many of the fine features of Armagh that you see today. Archbishop Robinson built many of the most important buildings within the city, including the Royal School, the observatory which has the motto the heavens declare the glory of God and also the Archbishop's Palace which you can see in the centre of the screen amongst the trees. Archbishop Robinson was an Englishman with no family links to Ireland and while there are conflicting comments about his abilities he cannot be faulted for his affection for Armagh and his respect for its historical importance. He gifted his Library to the people of Armagh and beyond, and the Armagh Robinson Library this year celebrates its 250th birthday. Among its 48,000 books, curiosities, and prints is Jonathan Swift's own copy of Gulliver's Travels. And so, as the cathedral bell now calls us to worship, we return inside the cathedral for our Eucharist to open this general synod and the cathedral choir leads us in the hymn Christ whose glory fills the skies.
Welcome to this Eucharist at the beginning of General Synod 2021. And, uh, although I'm presiding here in St. Patrick's Cathedral, Armagh, there will be contributions throughout the service from uh, parishes around Ireland. Uh, the propers we will be using are those for the 17th Sunday after Trinity and the post-communion prayer uh, is that commemorating the saints of Ireland. So grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We join together in the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather as a synod conscious of our failure as God's people of our personal sin, of our profitable connivance with the injustice of society, of the pursuit of our own interests as a church, of the stain on us of the sin of the world. Let us examine our conscience and confess our sin. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who trust in him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord ransoms the lives of his servants, and none who trust in him will be destroyed. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive your sins and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that here we may have your peace, and in the world to come may see you face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who from of old taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the, one, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, beginning at the first verse. All the people gathered together into the square before the west gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of men and women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. The scribe Ezra stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the purpose and beside him stood Mattatiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hikiah, and Masai on his right hand, and Padiah, Mishael, Malkijah, Hashem, Habadana, Zechariah, and Malshulam on his left hand. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Achub, Shabbatiah, Hodiah, Masia, Kalita, Azarara, Josabad, Haman, Peliah, and the Levites helped the people to understand the law, while the people remained in their places. So they read from the book from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and the scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the Lord. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, and to send portions, and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Luke, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your time that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day, it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Much as all of us would have loved to have been gathered today in St. Patrick's Cathedral in Armagh, I'm delighted to be able to share with you from St. Augustine's Church that sits on Derry's walls right in the heart of our city. Known locally as the Wee Church on the Walls, Its modest size belies its huge significance in the Christian heritage of these islands. Because it was here that St Columba built his first and what was reputed to be his favourite abbey. And the church actually sits on the footprint of the original abbey. From here, Columba's network of monasteries spread out across Ireland and eventually beyond as centres of mission, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. This year, we celebrate the 1500th anniversary of Columba's birth in Garton in Donegal. Our celebrations have been more muted than what we would have hoped for, but particularly in the Northwest, we celebrate both his example and his legacy. Now, from the vantage point of this monastery, Columba would have looked out, of course, at a very different view than today. At that stage, the hill of Derry was more or less an island. He would have looked out over the oak forests that gave the city its name. The view was different, but Columba looked out over a people who knew the hardship and uncertainty of life. Disease and illness brought to them both physical weakness and fear. And the tribal divisions were the sectarianism of the day that drove both conflict and division. It was a fragile and fractured world. And it was into that environment that Columba became a pioneering missionary with a confidence in the good news that he shared. Do you know, I think the parallel is a clear one. We all know the fragility of living through this pandemic. And unfortunately, the continued fracturing of our society, whether on sectarian, racial or economic lines, are all too real. So as we seek to play our part in rebuilding church and indeed society, I actually believe Columba's example can inspire and help us. 
Of course, all of us lament. We lament what we have lost and we lament who we have lost. Of course, all of us are concerned. What will we be able to build back? What is left to build back? Will our young families appear again? Will the vulnerable feel safe meeting together? All of us have our concerns. And I'm sure the followers of Jesus did when, as our gospel recalls, when he sends them out, the 72, two by two, they would have had their concerns and their worries about what the next chapter held for them. Now, it's interesting to note that this passage from Luke's gospel speaks of a larger group sent out on mission. It wasn't just the 12. I think it's clear the task of rebuilding and renewing is not just for some of us, but for all of us. I'm sure you know the example of the church being likened to a football match. 22 people desperately needing a rest, watched by hundreds of people desperately needing some exercise. Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. He still sends us out, into a fragile, fractured world with good news, showed both by our words and in our deeds. And Jesus also tells us what the fuel for his mission is, the fuel to keep going and to thrive no matter what the challenges are. Ask, he says, ask the Lord of the harvest, or as other translations put it, pray therefore, to the Lord of the harvest. The fuel for our mission, indeed the fuel for our lives, the fuel for our rebuilding, recovery, renewal, has to be prayer. Throughout the pandemic, I've been saying to people, pray like you've never prayed before. I'm convinced that every prayer matters, every prayer counts, and we need to keep praying because the reality of the challenges that face us are great. They were great for the 72 as well. Jesus says to them, go, I'm sending you out like lambs amongst wolves, which sounds pretty ominous, doesn't it? But yet the message we are compelled to share is vital for our fragile, fractured society. When you enter a home, says Jesus, Say, peace be to this house. The message of peace. It's a message of God's peace in our lives, a message of God's pardon for us, and a message of God's purpose for today and for our future. We are called to be both messengers and vessels of God's peace through our words, through our actions, through our very lives, to carry and share the peace of God that Jesus tells us some will welcome and sadly some will reject. Do you know, I always think our parish structure gives us a great advantage. It's almost Columban, isn't it? If we see our parishes as mission stations throughout our island to our fragile, fractured world. So each one of us has a role to play with prayer as our fuel, with a message of peace in a challenging world. The Old Testament reading today from Nehemiah, after Ezra reads the book of the law to the people, there's almost a feeling for them of being totally overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed both by the task and the sense of responsibility. Nehemiah shares these words that speak to us. They speak to us in times that often seem overwhelming in this fragile, fractured world. He says this, this day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
May the joy of the Lord be your strength. May the joy of the Lord be our strength. Amen. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all that is seen, seen and unseen. unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, Father God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our prayers to the Father through Christ, the Lord over all things. For the whole church of God, for our unity in Christ, that the world may believe. For the Anglican communion of churches, for the common life of its members across differences of culture, circumstance and society, that they may bear witness, O Christ, in truth and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this Church of Ireland, its parishes and dioceses, bishops, clergy and people, that our faith may be manifest in the cause of justice, reconciliation, healing and peace, not just in words, but also in action. For this Synod, for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in all truth, that by its own life and engagement with society, this Church may serve your purpose in this world. We pray for renewal and recovery for the life of the Church in the midst of the current global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the world in which we live, for the beauty of creation around us, and the rich resources of the earth entrusted to us, and for generations yet to come. For those places where war and violence is a daily reality and where people live in fear. For those who have fled their homeland and live now as refugees in foreign places. For the people of Ireland, North and South, for wisdom in the choices they, be, they make before them and in the forging of relationships and beyond these islands. For communities from which we come that in them we may be as salt and light, peacemakers and bearers of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those for whom today is painful, in sickness or anxiety, in poverty or bereavement, giving thanks for the life and witness of those who have gone before us, whose service we remember, and those whose faithfulness is known only to God, we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. To this land you sent the glorious gospel through the teaching of Patrick. You caused it to grow and flourish in the lives of men and women filled with your Holy Spirit, building up the church to send forth the good news to other places. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, given your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We, we remember, remember his passion and death. death. We, we celebrate, celebrate his resurrection and ascension. And we look for the coming of his kingdom. kingdom. Accept through him our great high priest, this is our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All, All honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We, being many, are, are one, one body, body, for we, we all share, share in the, the one bread. bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. To the, the glory of God, God the, the Father. Father.
God our guide. You feed us with bread from heaven as you fed your people Israel. May we who have been inwardly nourished be ready to follow you all the days of our pilgrimage on earth until we come to your kingdom in heaven. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God, who in days of old gave to this land the benediction of his holy church, fill you with his grace to walk faithfully in the steps of the saints and bring forth the fruit of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.